it is not the strongest of, the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is, the most adaptable to change. Ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. A man who dares to waste one hour of time has not discovered the value of life. I love fools' experiments. I am always making them. An American monkey, after getting drunk on brandy, would never touch it again, and thus is much wiser than most men. We must, however, acknowledge, as it seems to me, that man with all his noble qualities still bears in his bodily frame the indelible stamp of his lowly origin. The mystery of the beginning of all things is insoluble by us, and I for one must be content to remain an agnostic. In the long history of humankind, and animal kind too, those who learned to collaborate and improvise most effectively have prevailed. It is not possible to live pleasantly without living wisely and honorably and justly, and it is not possible to live wisely and honorably and justly without living pleasantly. The highest possible stage in moral culture is when we recognize that we ought to control our thoughts. Man is descended from a hairy tail quadruped probably arboreal in its habits. I cannot persuade myself that a beneficent and omnipotent God would have designedly created parasitic wasps with the express intention of their feeding within the living bodies of caterpillars. The love for all living creatures is the most noble attribute of man. An idealist is a person who helps other people to be prosperous. There is no fundamental difference between man and the higher mammals in their mental faculties. I am turned into a sort of machine for observing facts and grinding out conclusions. The very essence of instinct is that it's followed independently of reason. The question of whether there exists a supernatural creator, a god, is one of the most important that we have to answer. I think that it is a scientific question. My answer is no. If the misery of the poor be caused not by the laws of nature, but by our institutions, Great is our sin. I feel no remorse whatever in having contributed to the dwindling of the population of these vile animals. I have tried lately to read Shakespeare and found it so intolerably dull that it nauseated me. Man tends to increase at a greater rate than his means of subsistence. It is always advisable to perceive clearly our ignorance. We can allow satellites, planets, suns, universe, nay whole systems of universes to be governed by laws, but the smallest insect we wish to be created at once by special act what a book a devil's chaplain might write on the clumsy, wasteful, blundering, low, and horribly cruel works of nature. A moral being is one who is capable of reflecting on his past actions and their motives, of approving of some and disapproving of others. 
the love of beauty is taste. The creation of beauty is art. False facts are highly injurious to the progress of science, for they often endure long but false views, if supported by some evidence, do little harm, for every one takes a salutary pleasure in proving their falseness. To kill an error is as good a service as, and sometimes even better than, the establishing of a new truth or fact. I have called this principle, by which each slight variation, if useful, is preserved, by the term of natural selection. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers, having been originally breathed into a few forms or into one, and that whilst this planet has gone, cycling on according to the fixed law of gravity, from so simple a beginning endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful, have been and are being evolved. A man's friendships are one of the best measures of his worth. Man with all his noble qualities, with sympathy which feels for the most debased, with benevolence which extends not only to other men, but to the humblest living creature, with his godlike intellect, which has penetrated into the movements and constitution of the solar system. With all these exalted powers, man still bears in his bodily frame the indelible stamp of his lowly origin. We are not here concerned with hopes or fears, only with truth as far as our reason permits us to discover it. As for a future life, every man must judge for himself between conflicting, vague probabilities. I have never been able to see how it is that whilst recognizing the limited competence of man and the fact that the light of science is and must remain small in comparison with the vast unknown, we yet claim that everything must be argued for or against in accordance with what that light may seem to show on the question under discussion. I can't speak about the sufferings of victims unless I have experienced them myself. In a world where abundance is continually increasing, a thousand people living in poverty must doubt their existence as if they had nothing. In science, no theory can be recognized as true by authority such as textbooks. Validity must always be based on evidence and verification. As human civilization advances, they can overcome more of nature's chaos and threats and use them to increase their well-being and happiness. In this world we live in, the most powerful thing is survival. It is one of the main driving forces behind human evolution and adaptation makes it possible. Evolution is a gradual process, and it requires a lot of time and many generations to be fully visible.